Well, hi there, Internet. My name's Court, and you've got courtside seats for my review of The Haunting of Bly Manor. Let's do it. The Haunting of Bly Manor is a drama, horror, mystery miniseries from showrunner Mike Flanagan and Netflix, loosely based on the novella The Turn of the Screw by Henry James and his other works, and an anthology sequel to Flanagan's The Haunting of Hill House. The miniseries stars Victoria Pedretti, Oliver Jackson Cohen, Amelia Eve, Tania Miller, Raul Coley, Tahira Sharif, Amelia B. Smith, Benjamin Evan Ainsworth, Henry Thomas, and Carla Gugino. After an au pair's tragic death, Henry hires a young American nanny to care for his orphan niece and nephew who reside at Bly Manor with the chef Owen, groundskeeper Jamie, and housekeeper Mrs. Gross. I'm straight up two weeks late to this review for a variety of reasons, some of which maybe I'll get to, but given the fact that I'm a big Mike Flanagan fan and I absolutely love The Haunting of Hill House, I really wanted to jump on here and talk about it. And since it's been out for a while, I am gonna get into some spoilers. This won't be a full spoiler review, but I will be talking about some stuff. So if you haven't watched it yet, you wanna go in blind, click off the video, go check it out. Hopefully you'll come back. Cool? Cool. I will start by saying I do think that Hill House is the better series. I was more engaged with the characters, I found it spookier, which is a little unfair because this series isn't really horror, but we'll get to that. But I do like the spooky stuff. And even though Hill House was one episode longer, it still felt tighter to me. Also compared to Hill House, this one has a really slow beginning. Hill House literally starts with a family escaping a haunted house. This one starts with a job interview. I actually found the first two episodes really pretty dull, like I was kind of bored. It wasn't until about halfway through the third episode where I was like, okay, now you've got my attention. Now I don't want to spend the entirety of this review just comparing it to Hill House. What good does that do? But I do want to say that after Hill House, I was really conflicted. I definitely wanted more because I'd really grown to love the performers and that family and that story, but Hill House really wrapped up the story, so there wasn't really anywhere to go. But did I want a new story with different characters and different performers? I don't know that that's what I wanted either. But Mike Flanagan, in his infinite wisdom, I really do love this guy. He cracked that nut. New story, new characters, but a lot of the same cast and even some of the same music. Familiar, but not stale. Well played, Flanagan. Now the acting in this series is wonderful across the board. I don't think there was a single bad performance in the whole thing. I will say that while I thought Henry Thomas was really quite good, particularly with the alter ego stuff, had a little bit of trouble buying his British accent. It really sounded like an American doing a posh British accent. On the flip side of that, Oliver Jackson Cohen, who I believe is English, played American in Hill House, he's playing Scottish here. That's not an easy accent to pull off, and I thought it sounded, to my ear, I thought it sounded really good, it was very consistent. Scottish people may disagree with me, but that's what I thought. And those kids were so good. Flanagan has proved with Oculus, Gerald's Game, Hill House in particular, that he really knows how to cast kids. And the girl who played Abra and Dr. Sleep, I mean, come on now. Those kids were indeed perfectly splendid. And for a series that's less horror and more gothic romance, it's really all about the relationships, and relationships are all about chemistry. And the chemistry between Hannah and Owen, between Jamie and Danny, between Peter and Bex, and even the weirdly romantic chemistry between Miles and Flora when they were possessed, it's all so beautifully done. And I love that they brought back Carla Gugino as the storyteller. And even though I came to the conclusion that she was actually Jamie before that was revealed, that ending still got me really choked up. Further, the reveal that Mrs. Gross was dead. I'd had an inkling about that way back in episode three when I'd noticed like she was never eating or drinking, it was weird, but it was still beautifully executed and really rather heartbreaking. And I have to imagine, I have to imagine that Mrs. Gross being a ghost was fully intentional. And Kate Siegel, who is so good as adult Theo in Hill House, she returns as Viola in the flashback episode, which I'll get to in a second, but I thought she was great. She and Flanagan are married in real life. I like to imagine that they're each other's muses. Still, that penultimate episode, while very well crafted, it didn't work for me all that well. I think it akin to that Stranger Things episode where Eleven bounces to Chicago. For this, I found it informed the story, particularly for the finale, and I thought it was very elegantly written, but it did really slow down the momentum of the series for me. That said, that episode did have the best scare of the entire Bly Manor series. I kind of feel like that particular story might have worked better if it was broken down and just seeded in various episodes rather than having its own episode, but what do I know? I'm not a screenwriter. Overall though, I thoroughly enjoyed The Haunting of Bly Manor once it really got going. It's delightfully different from Hill House, but while still feeling familiar. Again, Hill House was more of a horror that used ghosts as a metaphor for mental illness. This is more of a gothic romance that plays with the idea of memory and how memories can be both toxic and suffocating or comforting. I do think that anyone going into this hoping for a Hill House 2 will be disappointed. 
But if you allow for something different and surrender yourself to the stories and characters, I think you might really enjoy it. Sure, it had some missteps along the way for me, but that final frame had me roll in tears and that's a testament to just how invested I found myself by the end. Now, I don't have a proprietary rating system as of yet, so I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna give The Haunting of Bly Manor. And I think I'm gonna give The Haunting of Bly Manor a... Well, it's perfectly splendid. Out of 10. So now I wanna know, have you seen The Haunting of Bly Manor? What did you think about it? Which did you like better, Bly Manor or Hill House? Whatever your thoughts, hit the comments below. Let's discuss. If you enjoyed this review, please smash that like button and give it a share if you really enjoyed it. And hey, why not take a second, do me a favor, click subscribe and ring that bell to subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews, entertainment news, trailer reactions, all that good stuff. Hope you guys are all safe and healthy. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Stay spooky.